let's introduce HBM because HBM is what's coming in Fiji, which is the probably the R9390X graphics card as the first product. It's yep. high bandwidth memory. And we've got a little diagram here. This is basically you have on the same package stacked DRAMs mm-hmm. with multi-chip stacks and then a GPU, right? Well, well, it's a quick correction. So the, the, it's not, the package is not how they talk. So what you have is that interposer is actually a very cheap silicon wafer. I okay, mean, so that's, right, right, right. It, then that's in the diagram here. Yeah, and so what the, the advantage here is that you get much denser metal wiring through your interposer than you do in the package and better okay. signal characteristics and so forth. So, yeah, so and, and, you know, this, like, is, this is Joe almost, Mastry's baby probably. Right, and this is almost like integrating memory onto the chip. It's like the next thing to it. and That's right. That, that gives you lower latency, right, because you don't have to go as far with the signal. And lower power use, right? I, I mean, I don't know how much it'll really reduce latency because they're optimized. You know, it's a GPU, so everyone optimizes for bandwidth. Ah, uh, the, okay. The big thing is way lower power. Uh, you know, and I think there have been Hynix presentations where they've said 5x better, and AMD's claim was 3x better, which which sounds pretty reasonable mm-hmm. um, in terms of performance per watt. And... Yeah, I mean, it makes a big difference because you can also get rid of uh, or reduce things that don't scale on I.O., like uh, your uh, your ESD production for electrostatic discharge. You know, as long as it's just silicon to silicon, you may not need something quite as big. And, and those sorts of circuits just don't scale with process technology. So getting rid of them would be, you know, a huge benefit. And so... AMD, you mentioned Joe Macri. He's actually got a CTO title over there now, I think. But Joe has been, he's working with JDEC, he's worked with memory technologies, and he shepherded to market multiple GDDR memories. Yep. And when he did that, then AMD won in that product cycle against NVIDIA because they had the best new memory tech yep. first. Mm-hmm. And so what we're looking at for the R9390X, I think, is the same thing where we have a new memory tech. Um, yeah. I have a couple of questions about it, though, because I think we're going to see HBM on Fiji. Yep. And I, I've, I'm hearing some things about it that could be disadvantages. So one of them is that they're only going to have four gigs of memory in total because they, they've got it, like the capacity, the way that it's stacked and, and, and set up, that's mm-hmm. the capacity they're going to be able to have, which isn't enough to match the competition's ability to stick more DRAM on a board right and with 4k displays being sort of a big marketing point like that could be an issue yeah i i i I don't know that it will be i think we'll have to test it and see if it really hurts right but that's that's been an issue the other question is well another question is what is the power consumption uh contribution to a modern big graphics card so uh, in terms of memory, is the memory savings that we're talking about with HBM or, or energy savings we're talking about with HBM really a big portion of the overall picture? Yeah, I mean, so first of all, I don't think it's going to be four gigabytes. That doesn't sound right to me. I mean, and it, it, if we... Okay, that's, that's reassuring, right? If they can do more. Yeah. I mean, my, my guess, and you know, now, now I'm uh, going on record for this, but I, I think it'll be more like eight gigabytes. I mean, certainly AMD. Look, I mean, they 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 know what the display technologies are. They're not going to do something, you know, to to really spite themselves. Um, I, you know, it may be difficult to get uh, sixteen gigabytes. Um, that doesn't matter. I mean, yeah, I mean, my, I've actually it, held a Fiji in my hand. So, so you're on record, and you you held one in your hand. But this uh, is I had no idea right? how much memory it had. I, I you know, this is not <laughs> okay. You didn't inside count, information. Like... This is just going from what I know of the HBM standard. Right. But you know, so so your question was, well, how much of the overall budget, power budget, could your memory be? And right. you know, I don't have recent numbers, but I remember a few years ago hearing that you know a full blown GDR5 memory interface 
could be on the order of 50 to 70 watts. That's, that's substantial. Yeah. Now, I don't know what's included in that. That may be memory controller and the physical layer interface. Could be a bunch of other things. But, uh, you know, I think the point is it is a really big portion of the power budget. Right. So, so that's good. And, and also, I guess the other thing that you're hoping hoping for in this case is just a whole crap ton more bandwidth than the other guys have, right? Like way oh, yeah. more than GDDR, GDDR5. So, yeah. And Actually, you get that... 70 watts doesn't seem unreasonable if you think about it, right? Because each GDDR5 DRAM is probably going to burn a couple of watts, you know, maybe two to four watts. I don't have the numbers off the top of my head. Yeah. And then on top of that, you have the GPU side of the interface is going to burn some more power to boot. Right. So, you know, it could be that, yeah, 70 watts between both sides of the interfaces is, is not unreasonable. So that that's, it's not the world, but it's a fair amount, even in the world of high-end GPUs, to save that much. Yeah, and well, I mean, that's like a quarter of your, you know, that's like maybe 20, 20 to 30% of your power budget. And so if you can now spend that on shaders, you know, that's great. Right, because shaders, relatively speaking, are power efficient. ALUs are power efficient. And, and the other thing you need, though, is you, you want that bandwidth because in graphics, bandwidth is one of the big constraints, right? I mean, that is... Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, the thing that bothers me a little is just, have you seen, like, there's some leaked pictures of, of VG cards and they look like they're water-cooled? Uh, yeah, I mean... You got to do what you got to do. I, I yeah, but I mean, if you got to do that, then like you've got to do a lot more apparently to evacuate heat than than your competition. Well, yeah. So I mean, there's two questions here, though, right? One is what's the total thermal dissipation, and and to be honest, I mean, for an, a high end GPU, I don't think this actually makes a difference. You know, when I'm playing a game, like to me, getting the you know. I haven't played a game in a while, but, you know, I'd like to play The Witcher 2, The Witcher 3 when it comes out. You know, If you're if, listening, send David a code for The Witcher 3. <laughs> Just, it, it's more about the lack of time. But, okay. you know, the, the, the point is that, you know, I'm not going to begrudge my GPU another 20 or 30 watts. It's really about the PCIe uh, power ins that, yeah. that I'm worried about. And so... Anyways, my point is, as long as they don't go over 300 watts, they're probably fine. But the other question is, if you've seen the prototypes that NVIDIA and AMD have shown, they're way smaller than standard graphics cards. They're like half or a third of the size. Right, so it may not be which so is much. Which an HBM benefit, right? It is, but you know the downside of cooling something... You know, you know, that's a third of the area is, well, now you've got a third less surface area to draw your heat flux out through. Right. So it could be that it's actually more of a thermal density problem and not a, a raw, you know, oh, my God, we're chewing through 400 watts kind of problem. It might just be, well, you know, it's cheaper to do water cooling than to have like a, you know, pure unobtainium heat sink. Right. Well, and, and no, that makes perfect sense. And, and, you know, I'm happy to use a cooler that takes the heat and lets me eject it directly out of the back of the case instead of just blowing it around inside like a yeah. lot of the, the, the sort of fan based things now do. So, um, so, so, there, so prospects look good for that. And oh, so, so let's, that's HBM. That's, that's sort of a prospect for Fiji. Um, we kind of talk graphics, but let's take this back to, what we mentioned, which is... Hold, hold using... on. So I did hear something interesting the other day. Okay. Uh-oh. What was that? <laughs> so um, I was talking to Riss and some other folks, and it sounds like Fiji will be some sort of derivative of um, Tonga. Yeah, Tonga is the latest... Yeah, sure yeah. it will, it, which means it has a delta-based frame buffer compression. Exactly. And so it's got tons of bandwidth plus more memory efficiency. Uh, yep. and, and that puts them roughly close to on par with what NVIDIA is doing with Maxwell on the memory efficiency side. Yep. Um, but presumably they're going to have even more bandwidth than like a Titan X. Uh, if oh, yeah, HBM I hope so. delivers. 
And so they, there's every potential for this product to be the fastest high-end GPU. Yeah, well, I mean, right, you know, I, I'm trying to remember the die size for Tonga, but... Big. It was the size of Tahiti, basically, like like an R9... Like 380 X. millimeters squared, something like that? I can, I can pull this up if you, if you really want yeah. to know. I mean, this so. would be interesting to know, because we can just do some back-of-the-envelope calculations here. Don't, don't forget to click on the banner ad, Scott. I love this website, man. It's so useful. So there it is, Tonga, 359 square millimeters versus Tahiti 365. Right. So, so, and, and anyway, there's all this stuff around Tonga that that's, we should talk about. But anyway, well, go ahead. Well, but, but the whole thing is, like, imagine you take away a bunch of area for the memory interface, because now you've got HBM, and that's going to be smaller, mm -hmm. right? And then on top of that, you know, AMD might be willing to go for a big die, especially if it's on a if it's 28 nanometer. That's a really mature process, and they probably have no real issues pushing through, uh, you know, a 500 millimeter squared die. Yeah, well, one so, of the architects there, uh, Mike Mantor, who I think is pretty influential at AMD now. I, yep. He's kind of he's kind of said to me in the past, just like. I think you make it as big as you, the reticle. Like, you just do that. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, oh, and, that's to that's totally the right thing to do. There's no right. question about it. So, like, a 600-square-millimeter die packed with GCN ALUs, a really compact memory interface, some power savings from, from the HBM, tons of bandwidth from the HBM, and the Tonga Voodoo for memory compression. Yeah, I mean, that looks like a pretty compelling product right there. I mean, I, going 600 millimeters squared might be, you know, the thing is, Intel does stuff like that all the time, but there's a real big difference between what Intel can pull off in their fabs and what TSMC can pull off in their fabs. I mean, I'll just point out that there is not a single company shipping a large die on 20 nanometer right now, TSMC, and that's nominally a mature process air quotes there yeah but but yeah 28 is i think what we're probably looking at for this chip based yeah. on the latest rumors and uh if they decided this is the risk portfolio we want maybe one reason that they went with 28 is because they're just like well we'll just make it freaking huge right <laughs> yeah sure yeah. i mean so, especially if they can sell you know if if that i mean if they can with nvidia it's always easy to justify you know these uh, mammoth die sizes because you know the answer is well we can sell it to the Tesla market for like five thousand bucks woohoo you know um, AMD it's uh, less clear of an example but if they can make a, a and sell a compute part out of Fiji then that would definitely allay a lot of the concerns around large die size.